Hello everyone, welcome back to Team Auto Trend Channel. Today I am here with the brand new BS6 Phase 2 Hyundai Venue DCT Turbo Petrol SX optional variant. Yes, that itself is a pretty long name, but along with that, you can also add ADAS to it because this is the first compact SUV sub 4 meter car in India to provide ADAS level 1 features. Yes, it does not have ADAS level 2 because this car does not have 360 degree camera system. It also does not have front parking sensors and this ADAS level 1 suite specifically includes features such as forward collision avoidance assist and it also has got lane departure warning, lane departure uh, assist, lane keeping assist as well and along with that it also provides driver attention assist and uh, yes, along with that there is also something called the lead vehicle departure alert. And yes, these are all the ADAS level 1 features included in this Hyundai Venue SX optional DCT top level variant. Apart from the DCT turbo petrol, the diesel manual version also has got the ADAS level 1 features which is a thing to be noted because this is one among the very few compact SUVs in the market today to provide a diesel engine and since the Kia Sonnet facelift is yet to be launched, this is currently the only compact SUV diesel car to provide ADAS level 1 features as well. So okay, let's now get on with the features quickly. Yes, uh, you get to see LED projector headlamps along with LED DRLs on this top spec variant and you also get the dark chrome parametric front grille design which is common across all variants of the Hyundai Venue. Then coming on towards the side profile, as you can see, this is a pretty boxy and stubby looking car with 16 inch dual tone alloy wheels exclusively available only on the SX optional variant. Yes, these alloy wheels are not available on the lower spec variants. However, you get chrome finished door handles right from the SX variant itself along with smart key access with push button start also. And you also get LED turn indicators on the sides. You also have got roof rails which are proper made of aluminium. Yes, you can put actual loads on these roof rails. These roof rails are available from the S optional variant itself. And you have got electric sunroof which is also available from the SX variant onwards. Then coming on towards the rear, you have got this connected LED tail lamps available right from the S optional variant onwards. And this is the 1 litre turbo petrol version which means you get a turbo branding on the right side of the tailgate. You also have got a reverse parking camera which is also available from the S optional variant onwards. However, the rear windshield wiper washer along with defogger are available only on this SX optional top level variant. Now let's talk about the interior quickly. Usually on cars equipped with ADAS features, the radar sensors are located on the lower part of the bumper or on the front fascia. But on this car, this is not a radar based ADAS and instead you get the camera based ADAS function. The camera for which is located on top of the front windshield. And now regarding the ADAS changes, what are the changes on the inside you may ask. You get this Creta steering wheel. Yes, this is the same steering wheel we have seen on the Hyundai Creta as well. And on the steering wheel, you get to see the lane keeping assist button over here along with regular cruise control. Yes, this car does not have adaptive cruise control, but the ADAS features work along with combination of the regular cruise control itself. I'll demonstrate you on highways as we will be testing these ADAS features now predominantly. So yeah, apart from that, the regular features on this SX optional variant include the semi power adjustable front driver seat for which the height adjustment is available as a manual lever, but for the sliding function and the recline adjust, we have got electronic buttons. Yes, this is a very unique feature. However, this feature is going to be exactly the same carried forward on the Kia Sonnet as well. Okay, then other key features include this fully digital instrument cluster, which also provides you the uh, the display over here for the driver assistance systems. Yes, you can also see that. And regarding what all driver assistance systems this car provides, you can actually go into the vehicle settings to see the warning methods and other stuff. Yes, you've got warning methods for driver safety priority, parking safety priority, driver attention warning, leading vehicle departure alert, and driving safety, forward safety, uh, warning timing, lane safety, and all these stuff. And then you have obviously the parking safety for the reverse parking camera. So these are the driver assistance systems available on this car. And anyway, we'll be testing on road. But yes, quickly, let's now check out the actual features. First thing, you get to see button start right from the SX variant onwards. But the turbo petrol engine is not available on the SX variant. So that is a thing to be noted. This is the 1 litre 3 cylinder TGDI turbocharged petrol engine available with the DCT 7 speed automatic gearbox. And this DCT also gets drive modes. Yes, you have the eco mode, sports mode and normal mode for engine response, which also we will be testing today. 
then yeah you have got the typical tiptronic function for the manual gear mode selecting as well so that's good and you have got a leather wrap beautiful looking steering wheel which is only tilt adjustable there is no telescopic adjustment but still it is okay and you have tire pressure monitoring system available as standard across all variants yes that's good and you have got esp traction control also available across all variants along with hill hold assist and you have got the engine idle start stop feature that is also a reverse parking camera yes no 360 degree camera system yet but still you have got a reverse parking camera which is of decent quality and you have also got something called the sounds of nature for ambient sounds if you don't want to play music for whatever reason so that is also available over here and you have also got blue link connectivity features including advanced voice commands for climate control ac control sunroof control also yes this electric sunroof is available from the sx variant itself uh, but it also can be voice controlled as well so that is a really handy thing uh, then yeah apart from that you have got the telematic controls for the blue link system located in the irvm however this irvm is not auto dimming it is instead manual dimming with a manual switch provided then you have the wireless charging facility that's provided over here the center console and you've got a decent looking center armrest which also integrates the air purifying system that is also available only on the sx optional variant and underneath you have got a decent storage space and then you have also got a cooled glove box which is also available from the mid-level variant itself then you have got large bottle holders pretty much lot of features in this car so it is well loaded however when you compare with some latest cars including the kia sonnet facelift or the tata nx1 facelift they provide an edge in terms of features over this Hyundai venue simply because this car does not provide a 360 degree camera system or ventilated seats. Yes, these seats are actually fabric upholstery seats with only a combination of leatherette material. So the Hyundai venue does not provide front ventilated seats. However, the driver's seat is semi power adjustable. So that is a weird combination, but still it is going to be handy for people who don't necessarily want ventilated seats. So that's okay. Uh, Alright then, let's now check out the rear seats quickly. Now I have adjusted the driver's seat for my height which is 6 feet for reference but uh, the Hyundai Venue is actually a sub 4 meter compact SUV. The Hyundai Venue has never been the most spacious car in its category. However, the talking point is the availability of flexibility and safety features right from the entry level variant itself. Because as you can see, you've got 60-40 split folding and two step recline adjustable rear seats separately across all variants of the Hyundai Venue and along with that you can also see three proper three point uh, seat belts along with adjustable headrests also available as standard across all variants. The only missing feature is the center armrest for the rear seat passengers however that is perfectly okay given the fact that they are concentrating more on safety features. So that's okay and you can also see ISO fixed child seat mounts available across all variants of the Hyundai Venue again. Then in terms of uh, overall legroom you can see that the Legroom is okay, it is not great but it's okay. The front seat backs are actually carved out for more space so that is why the knee room seems a bit better than uh, before so that's a good thing. You have got uh, AC vents, rear AC vents available from the mid-level S variant itself along with two C type USB charging ports for the rear seat passengers. This is how the dashboard of the SX optional DCT variant of the Hyundai Venue looks like. It has got almost all the features you need except for some fancy features such as ventilated seats and 360 degree surround view camera system. It has also now got ADAS level 1 features which improves the safety suite of this Hyundai Venue. More importantly because Hyundai have significantly made improvements on safety on all of its cars starting from the entry level Grand Eta Neos base variant you get six airbags available as standard so that is a super super improvement over its competitors and then you have also got ESP traction control hill hold assist available as standard across all variants of the Hyundai venue as well okay other features at the rear include the soft touch door pad armrests and you have also got one liter bottle holders you have got only one speaker on the rear doors whereas the front you get two speakers and two, two tweeters so that is okay. No Bose branded speakers though, which is quite a disappointment, but still it is perfectly okay. Other features are always available on the Hyundai Venue. And other small things include the yellow separate cabin lamps for the front and rear seat passengers. And uh, basically that's it. Yeah. Okay then, let's now check out the luggage capacity. As usual, the 
Hyundai Venue provides 350 litre luggage capacity which is uncompromised on any variant or any version. More so because now in terms of flexibility you have also got this 60-40 split folding rear seat function as standard across all variants which is a big plus for flexibility again. Then under the boot floor you get to see a 15 inch steel wheel across all variants which means you can use these uh, uh, spare wheels for temporary use only even on this top level variant. At least on the SX optional turbo variant they could have provided a full size 16 inch wheel but still it is okay because they are meant to be only for temporary use only. Then other features in the boot area include only one yellow boot lamp on the right side, no bag hooks or nothing provided elsewhere. So it is okay but still it is uncompromised in terms of space that is a big plus. Okay then, let's now put this ADAS features to test on the Hyundai Venue DCT Turbo Petrol. Okay folks, so yes, we are here on the highway. So the main focus of this video is the ADAS function, ADAS level 1 features of the Hyundai Venue. So the first thing is that this car has got lane keeping assist, lane departure warning and lane follow assist as well, which is basically the same. So I have activated everything. The simple thing is that you can deactivate using the buttons on the steering wheel itself so that is very very handy so i'm just turning on the lane keeping assist and lane following assist so even if i am not turning on the cruise control the steering assist works perfectly well and if i go too close to a truck for example like this it shows oh wow and there works the emergency braking so that works perfectly well only thing is that you should be aware of the vehicles behind you if there is no vehicle behind you then it's going to be okay but uh, the situation is that even if you go that close to a vehicle you will obviously be aware of that right the warnings are enough i guess so the emergency braking assist works only if you go too close to a vehicle probably around uh, two feet distance or three feet distance so that is not going to be very effective on highways but in city it is going to be perfectly okay so now let's test out the cruise control and lane follow assist so as you can see i'm maintaining a speed of 66 km per hour and the roads are curving right so it is detecting the lanes on the highway the left side lane line is actually a bit faded but still it is detecting properly well which means i don't need to worry and yes it after us after some time it just requests you to keep your hand on the steering wheel so let's see it works nice nothing to worry it steers automatically it keeps you in lane and it keeps you at the center of the lane so it does not oscillate you between the lanes so that is actually pretty nice so i'm activating the cruise control now at 80 km per hour speed and let's just change the lane so that i get to a more free lane and i'm leaving the steering wheel let's see Works perfectly brilliant. Let's just reduce the speed a bit. Yeah, it works really nice. The lane keeping assist works perfectly well. So all you need to do is just keep your hands on the steering wheel and pay attention to the road so that on long distance cruising, uh, on long distance highway journeys, this is going to be very very convenient. And it's basically going to take the fatigue out of you. So you have cruise control, you have lane keeping assist. That's good enough, I guess. The only thing is that it does not have blind spot warning, blind spot assistance and blind spot collision, side collision avoidance, that is not there. But forward collision avoidance assist is there and you also get driver attention assist as well. So even if you are not looking at the road and if you are say, uh, say drowsing off, probably uh, feeling a bit sleepy, then it will warn you that you are not watching the road. So that is quite handy and helpful again. So this is a big plus on my side, availability of ADAS level 1 features. The same thing is going to be available on the Kia Sonnet facelift as well. So once I get hands on the Kia Sonnet facelift, I'll bring you a detailed review of that as well. Okay then, uh, let's now conclude this review, talk about the pricing and value of this SX optional with ADAS of the Hyundai Venue. Yes folks, that was a quick drive review of the brand new Hyundai Venue DCT SX optional with ADAS level 1 features. Clearly, as we can see, compact SUVs have come a long way from providing just normal comfort and convenience features to being the most hotly competitive segment in the Indian market today. 
The camera based A dash level 1 system on the Hyundai Venue may not be perfect. However, it still provides additional convenience for long distance driving, especially on smooth highways. Moreover, the Venue itself now provides a whole host of standard safety features, also providing a great number of comfort and convenience features on the top level variant as well. The good thing is that, apart from this automatic variant, the ADAS features are also available on the manual versions. Do let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this ADAS level 1 features on the Hyundai Venue. Meanwhile, this is Viprajesh signing off. See you on another video. Thank you for watching.